Well, I was the most shocked uh, in the last week when I watched some of the US major TV stations when uh, Trump gave a press conference. And you could see how the um, you know, heads of some of the TV stations interrupted the president of the United States speaking by you know, saying, we, we don't agree what he's saying. Uh, he is now uh, putting forward fake news. And therefore, we overrule the president of the United States speaking. And that came from several TV stations. I mean, this is a scandal so big. I mean, if this would happen in any kind of banana republic, you know, it, it would be an outrage because it would still be a violation of sovereignty of that country. But that this is happening to supposedly the most powerful man of the most powerful country on the planet, I think that that fact alone should wake people up that what we are looking here is dictatorship. It's the complete danger of loss of freedom. Now, I find it equally revealing that immediately after Biden was declared by the media uh, to be uh, the winner, not, not by the Electoral College, but by the media, uh, all the Atlanticists in Europe and elsewhere <clears throat> immediately said, oh, we immediately congratulate Biden. It's so good that the whole old system is, is back here. While, you know, this was uh, von der Leyen, uh, Merkel, Steinme Steinmeier, uh, Röttgen, all of these people t totally died in the wool Atlanticists. They congratulated Biden. But the so-called aut autocratic governments, they said, no, we have to uh, wait what the legal and democratic process in the United States will result in, and we will not congratulate Biden until that has been established. And this was by such, quote, autocrats like Putin, like the Chinese government, like the president of Mexico, of Bolivia. So, you know, maybe in the whole narrative of who is for <clears throat> democracy and transparency is not exactly what people want, uh, are supposed to believe. Now, I think we have reached historically a point of absolute decision. And, you know, if you think about what is in the American Declaration of Independence, I think we are exactly at that moment. And I just want to read you one sentence from, from this declaration. But when a long train of abuses and also patience pursuing invariably the same object evinces a design to reduce them under despotism, it is their right, their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. Now, that is the principle on which the United States was, was based uh, as a young republic. And, you know, this is also an idea which was used by Friedrich Schiller, whose birthday we celebrate today, and that's why I'm quoting it also, uh, because he is the poet of freedom, and he has written so many things which were really strategic studies of how to deal with such situations as we are experiencing now. He wrote a whole uh, drama where you know, he referenced very clearly this fight of the American Revolution and the Declaration of Independence. And this was his very celebrated and popular uh, drama, popular around the world, Wilhelm Tell, which plays naturally in Switzerland and which is the question there also, would the Swiss people accept the tyranny of the Habsburg, or would they uh, shed this, uh, this tyranny? So in the famous Rütli Oath, uh, which is almost, you know, if you compare that to the Declaration of Independence, you can actually see how the same ideas inspired Schiller. So he writes there, no, there is a limit to the tyrant's power when the oppressed can find no justice. When the burden grows unbearable, he reaches with hopeful courage up unto the heavens and seizes either his eternal rights, which hang above inalienable and indestructible as stars themselves. The primal state of nature reappears where man stands opposite his fellow man as a last resort, 
when no other means is of avail, the sword is given him the highest of all goods we may defend from violence. Thus, we stand before our country. Thus, we stand before our wives and before our children. Now, obviously, Schiller was very, very uh, careful with the last scene of that drama to make sure that people would not draw out of this uh, whole uh, play the right to commit terrorism or violence. Uh, he's very, very careful. So if you read this drama, which I want to encourage you to do, please read the last scene because uh, there have been performances where that was left out and then people took that as a, you know, as a encouragement of, of violence in the streets, which is explicitly not meant by Schiller. But otherwise, I think the ideas of the Declaration of Independence, that a point has reached where there is enough, uh, that this must end, and the idea of Friedrich Schiller, no, there is a limit to the tyrant's power. That is the message which everybody should carry in themselves in the next period. And I think we need an international mobilization because the outcome of this fight is not just an American question. As uh, Kirk Wiebe said in the beginning, if this, and I think Dennis said it and Mr. Jatras also, that if this fight is lost, I think the whole world will be under a dictatorship. And I think also, you know, the Biden team, which is coming on uh, or would be coming on, uh, stands for war. And there are some more patriotic forces in Europe who have said so, uh, Willy Wimmer being one of them, uh, but also people from the right and from the left who are thinking people uh, have clearly said that the whole confrontation against Russia and China, the whole expansion of NATO into the Indo-Pacific, the encirclement of Russia and China, which has been going on with Bush and Cheney and <coughs> Obama before, would probably really bring us to a, a catastrophe. So everything is at stake. And therefore, I think we should take the words of the Declaration of Independence on a Friedrich, and Friedrich Schiller to heart.